Hey guys, today we're going to talk about how we can move our apps between a dev environment, a test environment, or a dev environment, and a production environment. Okay, so the way we're going to accomplish that is we're going to, be, going to do that by creating solutions in Power Apps. So the solutions allow us to basically package everything together and then move, move the, the package to the different environments. Okay, so let's take a look at how we can do that inside uh, make.powerapps.com. So when you're initially creating your solution, when you're initially creating your app, what you want to do first is you want to create a solution here. So if you click on the solutions section here, and let's just do a new solution, and we're going to just call this a test solution. And publisher is kind of important here, so let's go ahead and take a look at the publisher. So the main thing that the publisher is going to do is it's going to prefix your your different entities. With, with a prefix, right? So what you're gonna do when we set up this publisher is we're gonna, gonna enter a publisher, and then we're gonna give it a prefix um, just so there's no collision between entities. So um, publisher's kind of important, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it a name. I'm just gonna call it, uh, give the publisher my name there, Scott um, Gaines. We'll give it a name, display name. And then the prefix, I'm gonna change this new. I'm just gonna make the prefix SG. You can make it anything you want. So if you're if you're doing um, if your company is Acme or you're delivering or you're creating a solution for Acme, you may want to create a publisher, call it Acme, and then prefix with ACME, right? So you just want a kind of a unique prefix uh, for each uh, publisher. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and save and close that one. Click done on the creating new publisher, and then we'll see my name in there as a publisher, right? Okay. And then we can leave the version alone there and we'll go ahead and hit create. So this is what you want to do whenever you're first starting your, your Power Apps project. Now once you get the uh, solution created, let's go into the solution. And really what you want to do is you want to create all of your entities, your apps, everything from within the solution. Now as you can see there is an add existing or a new. So if you do have some apps that, that you created outside or entities if you created outside of the solution you can add existing but it's a good habit to get into whenever you're you're doing this go ahead and create a solution and create everything from within inside the solution and you'll see when I create an entity here it's going to add some other components into the solution automatically for me um, so it's another reason why to do it so let's go ahead and create a new entity here so we're going to go down to new and we'll create a new table so recently, just I think yesterday or, or the day before, they've renamed entities to tables, so uh, tables and rows. So let's just, I'll try and use the new terminology. So create new table. And then the table name, let's call this um, grocery list. We'll, we'll just, and then, so notice here's my prefix for my publisher. Um, and then the primary column name, I'll just leave that alone and leave that the same there, okay? So now we can add some columns. Now, one of the things that we may want to do here is let's, let's add a um, uh, item type. And let's make that an option set. So let's go down and we'll uh, do, um, do choice. And what we're going to do is on the, there we'll do a new, new choice. So we're going to do new choice. And then what I'm going to do on the display name, I'm just going to, suffix that with choice so it, so I can tell that that's an option set and maybe we have um, in our groceries we have uh, fruits and vegetables and canned items okay and then we'll save that okay and then we'll hit done there okay so we've got our item type. Let me filter down. I just want to see the custom fields here. So we've got our, our name, our primary name, our item type, and we can keep adding, adding items here to our table. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit the save table here. We'll just continue to build our, our table out as normal. Go ahead and save this. All right, now if we go back and click on our test solution, so remember we're still within the solution. So notice we have our, our table now, and then we also have our choice. So you know we created that custom choice there. So here's our, our list of list of items and choice. So this is what I was talking about. When we created that table from in, inside the solution, it's going to add our choice fields within the, within the solution as well. So another thing we would do is go ahead and create our apps. Let's go ahead and create a new Canvas app and we'll do a phone, phone factor. 
and we'll kind of create a simple app. Okay, I'll skip this. And I'm gonna pause the video here for just a second. I'm gonna create just a simple app for us and then I'll be right back. All right, so what I've done is I've just created a very simple app. I've created, I've connected um, this to a Dynamics environment. I've got a list here, a, a gallery view of customers. So this really doesn't do anything else. Um, just It's just a gallery view of customers here, okay? So I've got that in there. Let's go ahead and we'll save this file. And let's just call it uh, customers. And we'll do save. And then we'll go ahead and sit and save. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and close that out. All right, so leave this. Let's go back and take a look at our, um, our solution. So in our solution now, we've got our customer, our grocery list, and then our choices here. Okay, so now once we've built our app, um, or built our solution, now just as a reminder, we can add existing elements to this. Um, but uh, we'll just go with these three just for an example today. So what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and hit the export button. We're going to go ahead and click publish, and that's going to make sure that everything has been published here. So this may take a few seconds to run, you know, maybe 15, 30 seconds. So I'll pause here and we'll let this run and we'll come back here in just a second. Okay, so once it's published, um, it'll, it'll, we can check for issues and we can hit run here. That, that takes a little bit of time, so I'm not going to do that today. So, but we'll go ahead and click next. And so here's the important decision that we need, need to make is whether you're going out, you're going to do a managed or unmanaged solution. Okay, so a managed solution isn't going to let anybody make changes to it, all right, or make make massive changes or you know uh, schema changes, etc. to to the data there or to the uh, to the app, right? So think of it like uh, in a normal dynamics, if you've got a dev and a test environment, you know, you do all your development in a dev environment and then you basically push that code up to test and you don't really do any code on the test side, you always do your development code in, in the uh, dev site, right? So if, when you push it to test, if uh, somebody finds a bug, you go back to dev to fix the bug, then you update test again, all right? So manage is kind of that, where it's, it's just a basically packaged and, and nobody can, can touch it. So it's not exactly that, but that's kind of just kind of a way to think about it. Now, unmanaged solution is if you're moving it from an, to another dev environment. So you, maybe you're doing development in your, your own uh, Power Apps environment, and then you're gonna move that to a customer into their dev environment. So you wanna, you wanna do that as unmanaged so they can make changes to it. So unmanaged is exactly what we normally see in the make.powerapps.com. I can go, I can change things, I can add things, I can do, do anything I need to to it, all right? So kind of the decision you need to make. Also, you might use managed if you're building this and selling it to somebody. Um, you don't want them making changes to it. So you know you would, you would sell that as, you'd give that to them as a managed solution that they can import, all right? So the example we're gonna to use today is I've got another environment set up that's a test. So I'm gonna export this out as a managed solution so, so I can put it in that test environment and I'll show you kind of what gets blocked and, and, and how it gets blocked there, okay? So like I said, we're gonna go ahead and do managed. Now you have the version here, this, this will, auto increment the last number here. Sometimes people will put dates in these fields, you know, to, to kind of um, indicate when this thing was built. You can, I'm not gonna do that today, but uh, you can you can put different numbers there. And then we'll go ahead and do, hit the export and give this a few seconds to export, right? So it'll, it'll take it just a few seconds. Again, I'll pause the video here uh, for so we don't waste your time um, and we'll let that export, all right? Okay, so we're back and we've got our test solution has been exported uh, out. So we've created a test solution and we have that now in our, in our zip file, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my, another environment. So I've got a test environment that I want to, to go to. This is a, just a trial environment I set up, but just think of this like your normal dev test and production, right? So you basically kind of want a uh, Power Apps environment for ever, to match up with every single FNO environment you have so that you can move these between the environments, right? As managed or unmanaged, all right? So let's go over here to solutions, and then we're gonna go ahead and import, and let's find our file. That file is in my downloads folder, and it's this one right here. So notice it's test solution managed. We're gonna go ahead and go okay, and then we're gonna go next. And then we'll go ahead and import. And then again, this, this will take just a few seconds uh, to run, but um, 
Let's just give it a second and we'll come right back. All right, so we're back. Our test solution has been imported successfully. So let's just click in there and go into our solution. And so notice that we have, you know, we have our app, we have our grocery list, and then we have our choice. You know, they're all still prefixed here. But let's go to our grocery list here and just look at it. And notice we can't add columns or subcomponents here to it. Let's go ahead and uh, show all here. So we can't add, add our, our columns here to it, okay? So let's go back to our test solution. And so at this point though, if we go, go to our app, we can go into this customer's app and launch it. And it should just show a, a list of customers there for us. It's gonna ask me to kind of um, allow that connection. And so we should get a list of customers here in a second. So this may just take a second to load. But just the point is that, that you have, it's gonna uh, move all of your components over to, uh, to the new environment. Okay, so I hope you see how this kind of works today. So we, we created a solution. We just add our components into the solution. It is a good habit to get into to pretty much create solutions for everything. I, I generally do, even though if I think I'm initially gonna start with just a Canvas app, it's amazing how often you start with just a, a small Canvas app and then that grows into bigger things where you need to add entities and things. You, re you really don't know. Uh, when you start building these. So I recommend putting these into a solution first. And that way you have more control and you can always export that out later if you want to move it um, between other environments, okay? So I hope you found some value in this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or a like. It just helps me out on the distribution of the video. And put out a video about once or twice a week on some kind of Dynamics content. So if, if you like this type of content, feel free to subscribe. That way you'll get notified when I upload a new video um, and you'll, you'll see when I upload a video. So like I said, I do upload about once a week. All right. So again, hope you enjoyed this. Until next time, thanks for watching. I'll see you later.